Okay. Hello, everyone. This is the material prep video for the tunnel book. Um, I'm going to show you the list of materials that you need, and then I'm going to demonstrate cutting all of the pieces that you're going to need to put together to put the tunnel book together. And then I'll make a series of videos uh, to do that process to how to put it together. But this is just to prep the materials since we have to cut everything by hand. Um, I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. So there's a handout that I'll put on the module, the Canvas module for uh, that lists all the materials that you need. But I'm going to go over it in the video as well. But I'm referring to this handout here that's printed out. This image here down here is a picture, like an illustration, digital illustration of the um, tunnel book itself, like the interior, which I'll show you in just a second. And then this illustration here is of the tunnel book pages. And then this little drawing here is of the concertina side panel. So these are some examples of tunnel books. So we're gonna be using a decorated paper for the cover. We're gonna be using a uh, book cloth on the spine and there's a spine piece inside here, here that it will, um, that's the, how it makes it stiff. This is the tunnel book. So it looks like this drawing. There's an in sheet or a paste down here. This is just the center. This is another piece of paper that's from the center that I cut out as part of the tunnel book of one of the pages. So this is the way it works here. It sits up so you don't cut the back panel. That's actually just um, the back panel is uncut because it gets pasted down. So we're going to put together the, the tunnel book and then uh, set it into the case like that. So the way it sits like, is like this. You'll be able to see it there. It would sit on a tabletop like that. That's the tunnel book. And then you can see down into it from above like that. So that's an example. Uh, these are all books that I've made and I'll do a video separately that samples of student work. Um, but this is another example. This one has an inset here uh, that we made earlier with the when, when I showed you the other structure with the inset. Let's see if you can see if I completely black block the background, maybe it'll focus, but no, it's not too close. But you can see the little inset here. And then I took pieces and put them, just kind of stacked them up. So that's just like collage right there. Uh, another decorative paper with book cloth spine. And then the paste down or in sheet here. There's a, a, a book cloth lining here. And then this is the concertina panels on the side that they just have cuts in them on, in this example. So I use the screw punch and then I just cut little X shapes there. And then that's the tunnel book there. Okay, and then another one, let's see, this is the one I made last semester. So this is more detailed because I had time to do it. I can't do that when I'm in a classroom. I, I don't do anything this complicated as far as cutting because um, there's not enough time. So, but these are, again, these are just pasted down and that's an example of what you can do with your cutout. So you're gonna start with the largest and go to the, the back where you don't cut. So the last panel is uncut. Oh, there's a little dot back there, how cute. I think I hole punched out of it. Anyway, so those are the examples. This one doesn't have anything cut on the sides, but you can do that. Um, so that's the examples of tunnel books. Now, for what you need, you're going to need a piece of binders board. So some of this stuff you should be familiar with, you are familiar with. The only, there's a piece that we haven't used, a couple of pieces we haven't used before. So you need your piece of binders board. We're going to be cutting two pieces of binders board for the cover. And you're going to need a piece of the, um, the spine piece of the Bristol card. Uh, so this is like folder card. This is an archival version. This is what they sell at Talus. I think what I put for you guys to buy at Blick is white, but it is Bristol. Um, but this is this is actually called folder card. Um, but it's it's a stiff, it's heavier than poster board. So poster board's not gonna be stiff enough unless you double it up. It's also not archival. Um, you know, I don't know if that matters that much right now. But uh, you just you do want to know the grain direction of this sheet. So this one is, I can feel it's a lot. This is a piece off of a bigger sheet. I can feel that the grain direction is very easily moved this way and it's very resistant in this direction. So this is the grain direction. So usually I'll mark things 
just real lightly with a pencil mark so I can see the grain. And so I know what it is on each piece, especially for something that's going to be inside the book. And like on the binders board as well, I can find that grain direction by flexing. Some materials are really easy to find and sometimes it's not, but this is like very resistant in this direction, very easy to bend in this direction. So a couple of marks on, I do it on both sides just in case, I won't forget what I'm doing. And then the third thing that you were gonna use, you're gonna use that, this is actually a new piece we haven't used with the card and the book cloth. So this is a piece of book cloth. This particular piece is not what you guys are gonna have. Let me see if I have, oh yeah, I do have another piece. Let me grab that really quick. This is already cut. Um, this is what you're gonna have. It's, it's a fabric exterior and on, then on the inside is a paper lining and that's really what you want. This is a starch back book cloth which is fine, but it's a little bit tricky to learn on because the glue can come through if you use too much glue um, because there, it's, it's just starch filled. So you can see there's no paper on the backside. Whereas with this one, and if you bought stuff from Blick or on Amazon, this is probably what you're gonna have, which is perfectly fine. And it's just the sample I have is not, so you won't get confused by that. Okay, and then you are gonna need a decorative sheet of paper. So one of the ones that we made earlier in that video, you should have made a sheet of decorative paper. So that's gonna be on your cover. So you're gonna to wanna to use that. Um, so then we're just gonna start uh, cutting paper. So the first thing we're gonna cut is the pages, the tunnel pages. Um, and you can have a variety of colors if you would like. It's kind of nice for the first one to be able to see um, examples of, or you know, kind of see the difference from page to page. So it's kind of nice to have different colors, but you don't have to do that for sure. If, if what you have, if you have a, just a bunch of green paper and that's what you need to use, uh, that's fine. And you can see I used a decorative piece inside of there too, which you can definitely do. Now see, this one is an example of if you cut too wide, if you cut your shape too wide, you'll be able to see the concertina here. I could probably trim the concertina maybe. No, I can't because that's the fold. So sometimes you can trim that first panel. Um, anyway, I'm getting, this is too far in because we're not there yet. But anyway, I'll talk about that stuff later. Okay, so just preparing the pages. So we're gonna cut um, a, six different pages, cut six of these. The grain is gonna be short and we're gonna cut them to seven inches wide and five and, a, five and a half inches high. Okay, so set this out of my way. I've got a whole lot of paper here that I've just had over this past uh, semester that I've got, I, you know, cause we've used it a bunch of times. And so I'm just gonna grab stuff. You do need one sheet to be able to cut your concertina pages out of. You need a piece that, that you can get two of the same color because you, you know, when you're making this book, you want your concertinas to match. I mean, you don't have to, but it looks, it looks nicer unless there's some design reason or if you just want to, if you're making a mock-up and you don't feel like you want to use your good stuff, you can also do that. But just know that that's what it's going to look like if you don't have two of the same color. So I went and found a bigger sheet that I could get two of the same color out of. So I'm going to set that one to the side because I know what I'm going to do with that one. But then I've got this kind of array of different kind of off cuts. They're not, but they're not small. But for each one, I'm going to have to find the grain. This one I used as a background, but I still might use it. I don't know. Um, I use it to stencil on. So I think I'll just grab one out. But I do, I do need to know what the grain direction is on this sheet. And I think it's this. And that's very resistant. This is correct. So the grain is running like this. So the grain's gonna be short. So I'm gonna wanna cut my, so the grain's running like this. And I wanna cut my seven this way and my five and a half this way. Because I want it to be, to the grain to run parallel with the height or with the short measurement. And that's five and a half seven and a half wide. So that's what I'm going to do. So this is just the process of cutting and, and you guys, have, you kind of know how to do this at this point. You could, you could use your mat if you have a big enough mat, if you want to line it up and just cut your seven, you could do that. So I'm just, I'm just lining it up here. 
And then I'm just gonna use my knife and, and slide my roller over to seven and line it up and cut. That. Let's say, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and cut two out of this. So I'll show the other way you could do it. If you don't have a big enough mat and you can't do this, um, you could just take your ruler and make two tick marks to connect. So it's seven, I'll make a mark there, go up a little bit. And this ruler, the measurement goes to the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that and seven there. So then I can, I don't have to line it up neat on the mat. I can just remember how I put my knife into the first mark and then line up the second one. And then I can cut. So I've cut the width of those two. I'm gonna go ahead and cut all my sevens and then I'll come back and cut all my five and a half. That's just the way I like to approach things. It's just, just kind of uh, get an assembly line going. So here's this pink, I like this really pale pink. I'm gonna try that one. So I gotta find, this is the, you know, early on I cut something out of that. I think the grain is this. Let me just check. Yep, it's very resistant that way. So it's easy this way. So again, I'll cut the seven and a half here and the five and a half there. Did I say seven and a half? I don't know. Seven is what it's supposed to be. So I just rotated it so that I can go ahead. Now this ruler I don't think is long enough for that. So I'm gonna grab my 18 inch. I love that ruler though. Hold on to it. <laughs> it's, I love the measurement going to the end like that. Okay, let me measure. And then find my seven and go ahead and cut that. Might be able to get two out of this one if it's 11 inches tall, because it's five and a half, two five and a half is 11. Let's see if I can get. Oh, great. I could get two out of that. So that's two, four that I have ready that I'm going to cut. So that's four out of my six. Only got to do two more. So I think I'll do. Two more of the same color. Let's see. Maybe I should get some green in there since I've got the green side panels. And this is the green on this one, just double check. Uh oh. Okay. Froze for a second. What's happening? Yeah, okay. I guess we're all right. It froze for a second. Um, let me just double check what I'm doing. Getting distracted. I think I can get two out of this, but just not in this height. But I'm going to cut that seven. That. And I need to cut two because I can't get two out of that height. Now I'm going to be ready to cut my five and a half height. So I'm still just working on that first group of stuff, which is the tunnel pages. Then I'll do the concertina. And I don't want to forget that end sheet. So I'm just going to go down the list of, from this handout. I'm just going down the list one by one and cutting my material. So that way you don't, don't need to gang anything up, you know, trying to save time or whatever because this is the the time is what the time is so we're going to do that not worry about that too much okay so that's all the sevens and now i'm going to cut the five and a half from those so now i'm just going to take it and rotate it because that's the direction so now i'm going to be cutting the five and a half here and again i could still do the tick marks if needed uh, but it, i like using the mat it's just faster. Five and a half. Okay. 
Okay. My little offcuts, like these are probably not useful for anything, but I'm just, for right now, I'm just setting to the side. Five and a half. Now this one I can get two out of, so I'm going to do that. And then just these two more. I guess those aren't 11, are they? Nope, not quite. close in size, so I don't want to mix it up. So make sure I toss that out of the way. <clears throat> and this is the last of those six. Might be time to change blades again because I'm having to push a little bit hard. It's okay for now, so I'm going to stick with it. Okay, so now I should have six of the interior. Of this. So this is the pages for the tunnel book. So I'll just put those over to the side and move on to the next piece. So that's the concertina side panels. Um, so now I need that big piece that I saved for this. You could also use, like if you made a bunch of decorated paper, you could do this. So the size on this is 16 inches wide and five and a half inches tall. And that five and a half is gonna be parallel to the grain. So on this sheet, it's like half of a full sheet. That's not the grain direction. This is the grain direction in this way. So it's like running like this. And I'm gonna be cutting my five and a half tall and 16 inches wide. And so this is another time where that larger ruler is better. If you have that, uh, move my glue out of the way. You don't need that yet. When we're making the book, you will need your glue. Yeah, I'm dropping stuff, but that's okay. It's my little cloth that I dry my brush on. I'm gonna move some of these tools off of the tabletop. And, Okay, because I need the full mat. Move my little ruler. I'm gonna use this 18 inch. So I'm gonna demonstrate using the ruler to make marks. So for this one, this is another one that the measurement goes to the end of the ruler. So I'm gonna just make a few, oops, I've got my, I'll have my pencil, I'll have my Xacto in my hand. Okay, 16. And then come up. I'm probably going to make three because I'm going to get two out of this height. So I'm going to make three marks to connect to make my line. Or to make my cut. I'm not actually going to draw anything. I'm just going to make the cut. So at 16. Okay. And now I want my exacto. So. 
at this lower one, I'm going to go ahead and put my blade. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. Make sure I'm under the camera. Um, put my blade in and then I'm going to line up these other two marks. Sometimes I like to flip my ruler over because that cork, as great as it is for some things, it actually stops you from being able to line stuff up, but then it'll slide when you're cutting. So it's like, you got to figure out which thing you don't like more. And I like to be able to get it in position. So then I'm just going to cut. And because I'm fearful of my blade being not sharp enough, I'm going to go down twice. Okay, so that did that. So now this is 16. And then I'll rotate it so that I can cut from the left the five and a half height. So here I'm thinking, I don't know if I should do that on that long sheet. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it by hand with the tick marks because, because the sheet's so long and you guys can't even see the other end of it. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm not cutting straight enough, just relying on the mat. Uh, I'm sure it's accurate enough. It's not even that. It's just that it's such a long cut that I feel like I need to just measure it. So I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to make. So for this one, I could go ahead and make both of them. So I'll do five and a half and 11 because that's, you know, what that is. So five and a half. And I'm making a pretty good size tick mark because the sheet is dark. And I'm, so, you know, I don't know. I probably wouldn't do that if I was, this was like an addition or something. I would, well, I'd be cutting with a cutter. There's no way. Making a, well, I, there is a way, but I'd have to take years doing it. It would take a long time. And 11. Okay. So I'll go ahead and cut the first one. Oops, I lost it. Oh, it's more towards the middle. Here and then find my other one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, there's one. And then the next one. Again, I just find it, I did it further up than I normally do blade and then slide the cork. I'm using the cork side. I don't know. It was sliding all right now. So I'm just going to go with it. Five and a half. Okay. Okay. So there's my two concertina panels. Move that strip out of the way. Set this over to the side with my other stuff. So that's my, that's what I got so far. So now the binders board. We need five and three quarters high by six and a half wide, and we need to cut two. So here's my piece of binders board. So this is a wide, so if you look at the book, get another book out. Uh, this, is, this board is wider than it is tall. So we're making a landscape uh, direction book. It's not gonna be a portrait, which would be here. So they're close in size because it's five and three quarters by, what did I say, six and a quarter? And so that's not that different. It's only half an inch. And so it's kind of just be aware of that when you're putting this thing together, that make sure you're putting it together in the right direction and make sure you're cutting correctly. So, okay, we're gonna cut the height, six and a quarter, that'd be 12 and a half. Can I get that out of this? Ooh, I can. So I'm gonna cut one height. Just cut my five and three quarter here. Okay, so you can see the grain direction is this. So I'm gonna cut my height five and three quarter all the way across the board because then I can get the six and a quarter out twice because this is a little over 12 and a half. It's like, yeah, it's a little bit, it's just there. I can do it, so I'm gonna do that. So five and three quarter. Again, I'm gonna make tick marks for this. And I do find that hard on the cutting mat to cut board by, by using the mat marks. And so I'd like to go ahead and just make marks for this. You can also use a pen if it's too light. Of course, do whatever you need to do. This is gonna get covered with book cloth anyway and with uh, paper anyway, so you're not gonna see these marks. It's not as, uh, the, the concertina and the interior pages, you would see marks, but you can also erase them if they're pencil. 
But for a board, sometimes I do make a mark with a pen. Okay, line that up and then cut. Now this I'm gonna to have to cut a few times, so just try to stay slow and steady. Do it like three or four. Still can't feel feel the mat. Still can't feel it. I think I feel it there, but I'm gonna cut one more time. So that was five. Yeah, and five is clean. Cut all the way. Okay. Set my scrap to the side. And now I've got to cut the six and a quarter. So I'll just make that mark on here. Six and a quarter. And then six and a quarter again is 12 and a half. So I'll go ahead and make that second mark. Six and a quarter, 12 and a half. All right, so then go ahead and cut that. Keep losing my mark. It's because there's a shine on the board from that light above. This last one. All right, two boards ready, done. Okay, so I'll set those to the side. So the book cloth strip for the covering, which is here, and then the lining, the book cloth lining. So that's two separate pieces. One of them is seven and a half inches high by three inches wide. And the other piece is six inches high by three inches wide. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just cut two seven and a half inch height and then cut that one down to six. That's what I do a lot. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. Um, because I'm only cutting these two little pieces. Again, if I was cutting stuff out of, a, you know, for an addition, I would do it differently. Um, so I'm going to turn this over to the back so we can see better. So the grain on this, I've already marked it. So when it comes off the roll, you need to figure out uh, which grain direction it is. Sometimes what I'll do is, so like if my roll was like this, I will unroll just a little bit. I'm going to show you my little trick. I mean, you can, whatever, take it or leave it. But like if this is my big roll of cloth, I will take, a little swatch and I will draw on there the little roll. <laughs> I will literally, this is what I do because I can't remember what I'm doing sometimes if I have a whole big roll of cloth. Okay, so I'll, and that's like a little rectangle. If you guys can see. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about here. Little rectangle. And then I write roll on it <laughs> so that I know that that's how the roll is. And then I cut off this little piece of cloth. And then I check the grain on that little piece of cloth. And then, so I'll go ahead and just do it. I don't need this little piece, it's okay. So I, I would just cut a little piece like this, but I draw that this is how it was on the roll, okay? And then I check the grain on it, just fly flexing that little piece. And it's this, so that on this piece, the grain direction is this. I'll just, this th lead is so thin on this pencil, it breaks a lot. I think I need to get a different pencil, but that's the grain. So the grain on this piece runs parallel to the roll. <laughs> Guys, sorry. Ugh. I need like a blank piece of paper that I can put behind this. Doesn't really help. It still keeps trying to focus on something else, but, um, yeah, so that's what I do often so that then I know what a whole roll, that's the grain direction. So that's my little trick. And then for a project, I would just set that to the side and know every time I'm cutting off that roll that that's the way it is. Most of the time, I will say on a big roll, a big bolt of fabric or um, book cloth, the, the grain is actually running perpendicular to the roll. 
So usually it's on there from uh, selvage to selvage, which is a, a textile term of how the cloth is attached to the loom. So, and when you see that, it's got like that finished edge, that's thicker, that's the selvage. And the grain runs with the selvage edge. So that's how it's usually on the bolt. But sometimes, every once in a while, I'll get a bolt that it's not like that and that it's, it's running like this. So I just gave you a little like kind of advanced information there, but it's just good to know. So you need to know the grain direction of this. So, okay, back to what we were doing. We've got to cut the seven and a half inches high out of this. So I'm gonna be able to get two of my two pieces out of this. And again, when we put it onto the book, we're gonna trim it finished. So I'm not super worried about this being perfect. I'm not even gonna worry about like this little, there's a little weird place there, but this is all gonna get trimmed. Okay, so this is for us to know, uh, to use and to trim down later. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the seven and a half. So I laid it down, the grain is running like this, and I want it to follow the seven and a half inch height. Run parallel to that. And I'm going to cut it. But again, this doesn't have to be perfect. And so for this, to be honest, I'm just going to just fold that in half because I need at least three inches. It does not have to be cut completely clean right now because we're going to square this all up later. So I just folded it and cut off that little fold. So now I have these two pieces. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna leave mine like this. You really don't need the six inch because we're, we're gonna trim even that if we cut the six inch. What you need to understand is that one is for the outside and one is for the inside. But for our purposes, I know what we're gonna do. Um, we, you know, this is fine. Cut them both to seven and a half by three approximately and we're, we're great to use that. So those are ready, but cloth strip covering and book cloth lining. So now I'm doing the paste paper covering, which is the decorative paper covering. Um, I actually might need to, I'll change that on the handout where it says paste paper. And there was something else too, I don't think I put up here this fine piece. So there's a couple of changes I need to make to this, but uh, I'll do that for you guys. So you'll see it correctly when you download it or you print it out. This is gonna say decorative paper covering because that's what we're gonna use. And paste paper is a decorative paper. So this is still useful. I could still get a couple of pieces of cloth out of that. So I'm gonna hang on to that. Put it over with my other pieces. So now I can pull out that decorative paper. And I'm gonna go ahead and just measure from, so the grain on this I know is like this. So that's my grain. And so these need to be the six and a quarter wide is here and the seven and a half height is here because I want it to follow the long measurement. Okay, so it's parallel to the long measurement, seven and a half. I'll, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna do it on the back, even though it's a little bit confusing. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, I feel like this paper is nice all the way to the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start on an edge. And it needs to be seven and a half, so I need at least 15 inches tall. Oh, I can't get two out of it, bummer. You know what, let me, well, no, okay, I won't do it. I, I'm like, I want to cheat that because I feel like it's probably be enough to make it a little bit smaller, but that's not what we're doing right now. I'm going to just cut two. But what I can do is just cut uh, the seven and a half here and then cut my six and a quarter, six and a quarter here. I can get two this way. So I'm going to do that. Uh, so again, the grain's running like this. I'm going to turn it so I can measure correctly. Any of these corners are fine, so I'm gonna just start from here. This pencil's driving me nuts. Let's see if I can find another one. I have nothing but thin lead in here. Why? Let's see if this one might be a little bit more, not break so easily. Okay, seven and a half is what I'm doing here. So I'll make my tick marks, seven and a half. And then the other measurement was six and a quarter. So I need two of those. So that's 12 and a half, just like that other one. So I'll cut this. Oop. Switching tools, 12 and a half. 
And then I'll actually show you what I do a lot because this is a cover. This is not something where you're gonna see the finished edges. It's a similar thing as to what I just did there, but um, uh, I'm actually gonna try to not cut much past these lines because I think I can use it other times, this paper. So I'm gonna try to start my cutting parallel here and come down so that I'm not wasting. I'm just gonna try to look and maybe just try, and, I mean, I have to overcut it a little bit, but I'm gonna try not to cut it too far. And then I can rotate, because I made tick marks, I don't have to use the mat except for the cutting pressure. And then this way. Okay, and now again, I'm gonna just fold this in half, like what I just did. And so for this time though, I'm actually gonna cut it. I'm gonna open it. I'm not gonna cut off because I can't remember, you know, from the past if this piece is exactly the size or what, but I don't think so. I think it's probably a little bit large. But anyway, I'm just, I've had that fold and I just put my ruler into the fold and I'll just cut it in half there. So here's my two decorative pieces for the cover. So I'll set those to the side. This is just the prep video and we're not making it yet. This is a lot of prep for one book, but it's a lot of pieces. So, okay, now I need the end sheet. So you might want to think about, you might want to take a second, think about what you're doing. So you're going to make two of these. Don't forget, you're, this isn't the only one that you're going to make. You're making one along with a video, and then you're going to make another one. Okay, so that's the, in this class, that's the deal, is you make one, like, in the group, and then you make one on your own. But it, they're both of them, you can follow the videos as many times as you need to, that's fine. Uh, that's my book cloth. So think about what you have. Why am I doing this? Oh yeah, for the end sheet. <laughs> what am I talking about? Um, for the end sheet. You might wanna think about like, this is the interior. This is gonna be the covers. This is my little piece for the spine. And what do I wanna do? So what I'm thinking about, what I'm thinking about is this, what do I want to put here? You know, this is also for the first one, I wouldn't ache too hard over this because whatever, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be fine. That's too small. I'm also looking at my pieces, what I have. Maybe I'll use something different. Maybe I'll use this yellow because it's different from everything else. Maybe that can be the one thing that's different in here. Uh, yeah. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Could use that green, a pale green. Let me see, hold on. It's not the right height. Oh, maybe, hold on. Sorry, I'm working things out. Ooh, it's already to size. Oh my gosh, that's miraculous. Okay, well, we're gonna go with this one. But I, I still think I need to cut it, so. But this is just about trying to match color and think about that stuff which you can do or not. This is also a very opportune time to use scraps of stuff. So do that if you need to. The concertina is that darker green. Okay, so this one needs to be five and a half inches tall. So it's the same size as the tunnel pages, but then only six inches wide. So let me just double check that it's five and a half. I believe it is. I probably cut it for something else. Yeah, it's like exactly five and a half. Okay, so I don't need to, on this particular piece, the grain is running in the right direction, which is short, and I don't need to cut that five and a half, and that just happened to be on the piece I'm cutting, but you may need to cut that. So, you know, if you gotta do it, you just gotta do it. And I've already demoed that, so you know what to do. Cut your five and a half, and then cut my six inches wide. And then, because this is a little strip, I am going to just put it on the mat and cut it to the six inches. Now this one is actually cut to the size. This is what we're going to paste down. I'll show you in a second after I cut. So this is not the piece. I need to set that away because that's close in size there. Okay, so this piece that I just cut is here. So you can see it's gonna go right there on the interior of the book. All right, so it is different than the rest of them. So, but hold on to it with everything else. Okay, so then the very last thing we gotta cut is the little spine piece. 
So this is kind of hard to do because it's a little piece that you're cutting out of a bigger material. Where is that? Oh yeah. Okay, so here's my big piece of uh, the Bristol card. I need this to be three quarters of an inch wide and five and three quarters inch tall. Um, so let me see if everything's square. And at least one of my sides is square, but I'm gonna cut off, I think I'm gonna cut a six inch strip off of this because I'm thinking about how I might use this in the future. And I don't really wanna just cut a little notch out of it because that's not useful. But I also don't need a five and three quarter strip very often. So this is like about saving materials a little bit. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut Maybe I'll cut a seven because that's almost like cutting this in half. This is just to save my materials. And then I have plenty to use later if I want to make a book that's taller. I can still do that because I'm probably not going to make a book much taller than that. This is like 15 inches. So I could I could do that too. I could just cut it at seven and a half. And see, these are the types of things. I mean, it sounds like who cares? Just cut it. But it's like, no, because I want to be able to use my materials. I don't want to waste materials. So I try my best not to take little cut, like little notches out of things, because then when you come to use that material, you know, it, it's not useful often. So I'm just gonna cut this in half. The grain is running like this, and I'm just gonna cut this in half, just to make it a little more useful for later. Cause then I can save this entire piece for another time. Cause we're gonna use that again. We're gonna be using that often here, from here on out in the class. Okay, so now I've got this seven and a half inches. It's gotta be six, uh, sorry, five and three quarter. Uh, but for right now, actually I'm gonna do it from this side. So I'm gonna cut off a three quarter inch. It's only this wide. So I'm looking at this line and I need to come in one, two, three quarters. So I'm going to just line it up. And I haven't cut the height yet. So I'm just cutting the width and I'm using my mat. And because I don't want I don't wanna be trying to cut on this side where there's just a little piece underneath the ruler. You can't do it that way. So you need to cut, you want the, the little strip that you're cutting to be sticking out. And most of the material is under your hand and under the ruler. So three quarter, three quarter. And I'll, let, me, I'll, let me cut this and then I'll talk about why it's this size. And I'll probably talk about it again when we're making it. Okay, so now this I can now I can still use this complete piece later. So I'm going to set that to the side. Now I got to cut this height, and it is five and three quarter, which is the same height as the boards that we cut earlier. So five and three quarter. Sometimes I say the measurements so much that I go, wait, did I say it right? Five and three quarter, yeah, okay. And of course you could always use tick marks, but I find it harder to do on little pieces. You also wanna make sure this is straight as much as possible. So it's following, it's 90 degrees. Yeah, we're good. So five and three quarter is here. Just make sure I'm looking at the right thing. So, so then you can just cut. And this, I try to do lightly because you can accidentally pull it and skew it. So you wanna try not to do that. So that's the piece that we need. And what that is, talk about that a little bit, is one of these samples. Um, you have to figure out how thick you think your tunnel book is gonna be. And because over the years, they usually end up being about this, what I did is I made the tunnel book and then I measured it with one board on top and uh, got that thickness. And I'm really, it really allows for maybe a little bit more width than you would have. Uh, it just depends on uh, what you have going on in there. Like if you start doing a lot of stuff like this, where you have fold outs and things, 
it would probably change the thickness of how that stays once it's closed. But that's what I've come up with is three quarters of an inch here. And I think it works pretty well for most of them. That's a better one, it's straighter. But yeah, so it's it's this width, it's the width of the, and so, you know, when it's loose and relaxed, it's bigger. So you have to kind of, you know, catch it in the middle a little bit here. And that's why putting a board on it, and, and I can show you that when we're making the book, but that's how I determined it. So it might not be that for a different, a different book. So that's all our pieces. Let's start from the bottom up. So we got the spine piece, we got the end sheet, we got the paste paper covers, or the decorative covers, that's decorative for us this time. Decorative covers, we have two. We have the book cloth lining and the book cloth covering. So we have two pieces that are the same, basically the same size, kind of rough cut. Uh, la, 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 covering, binders board, we got our two pieces here for that. And we have the concertina side panels here, two of those. And we have the tunnel pages. And you should have six of those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's all the materials. And you're gonna come and watch the next video. We're gonna first make the tunnel book, the, like the, pa the pages on the inside. And then we're gonna make the case. And then we're gonna put the whole thing together. All right, all right, thanks.